Right then, we're back once again for Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival. So next up, we have a real treat. It's Liam Shortall's Live From 435. Yeah, this one's gonna be great. I hope you guys all enjoy. Enjoy. I'm a musician from Dumfries and I live in Glasgow. I'm 23 years old and I run a project called Corto Alto. Um, the project's been going for about around about a year and we've been releasing a new track and video every three weeks since last May. Uh, and we just finished that project about a month ago. Working in Glasgow as a musician is awesome. Uh, there's loads of great musicians here, loads of great venues and great bands and great projects happening. Um, I studied at RCS, like the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. I studied jazz there. I graduated in 2017. And since then, I've been working with the Scottish National Jazz Orchestra with Tom McGuire and the Brass Holes, with uh, Graham Costello Strata, uh, Aku, which is run by Harry Weir. Especially if you're a jazz musician, to kind of be scared to release music just because you're scared of what other jazz musicians will think or what other musicians will think. And that kind of thinking really just stopped me from having the confidence to put out my own stuff for it for years. Let's go back to the other other <laughs> drum beat, right? No, so D D is is a uh, jungle. And then the uh, fifth I put C is jungle, mate. It, what's D? These like cross like every beat again. Okay, D and then and then the then then. Back to uh, no, the fifth bar D is a half time uh, hip hop group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just try the fifth, fifth bar of D. One, two, one, two. Uh, let's try let's try D now. <laughs> Said it's a real thing, pressure, pressure, wow. Check. Link with the people, link with the music, link with the rhythm and flow. Pressure hit me, play sweaty hot like Mexico. I don't care where you come from and I don't care where you go. All the tribe are welcome, rock up, enjoy the show. So enter the place with a smile, your face, the vibes, them up before. Feel it, jump up, stand up, move by their own control. Say quarter, alter, yeah, them and the control. You want to spiral, rock up and get my microphone, hey.
<laughs> Alright, the problem is, see when I say, see when Justina gets to about there, can you play the chord and then I'll introduce it over the chord? Yeah, sick. Chatting away? Chatting away. Chatting away. What's the thought? Is this meant to what be like in a shot? Chatting away. I think it's meant to be in Scotland and that weather. Yeah. 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 Body. 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 This next tune's called Otro Lado. I release every three weeks because I always was kind of quite scared and nervous to release my own music and I felt like doing it with that frequency and with that kind of regularity it would make myself accountable and just kind of force myself to release music and write music in a kind of constant rolling way um, and feel, also feel like the pressure of releasing the, the, the pressure I put on myself to release that volume of work and that kind of uh, constant stream of work was gave me the ability to kind of explore different things um, compositionally and musically as well. So never really feeling like, oh, I've got to release one thing; it's got to be this genre or um, yeah, it has to sound like this. But it was kind of more I could explore different sounds and different music that I was interested in. And, interested in kind of pursuing but now like to, towards the end of the project I'm more finding my voice compositionally it's been really nice to just like explore all this different music and and uh, finally get somewhere I'm kind of getting happy with. so much music that I love. Um, when I was younger I used to just listen to loads of hip-hop and soul, uh, like D'Angelo, uh, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, Dilla. Um, I also love loads of jazz, 
Um, I listened to loads of trombone players, JJ Johnson, Curtis Fuller, Carl Fontana, Elliot Mason. A few of my favourite musicians are Isaiah Sharkey is a guitar player, he plays with D'Angelo. He's just a ridiculous musician, um, so soulful, just my all time favourite guitar player. Um, my favourite trombone player is probably Elliot Mason, he plays with Lincoln Centre Jazz Orchestra, he's just ridiculous. Um, and I really love Wynton Marsalis as well. Uh, yeah, there's so much great music happening in Glasgow right now. Um, like Joseph, Kitty, who I've collaborated with on what a tune. Um, the Black Denims. So much great jazz in Glasgow as well. Like Mezcla, Fergus McCready, Matt Carmichael. All these guys are just killing it right now. So yeah, Glasgow is such a great place to live, um, to be a musician at the moment. I feel. Auto tune, it'll just stem from a guitar idea um, or a melodic idea that I've just been singing, and then I'll write write to that. But I usually like to keep things quite straightforward when I'm bringing sheet music to the band because obviously everyone's so talented in, own, in their own way and can bring their own thing to, to, to my music. Um, I'm not gonna write a, like a drum part for Graham Costello or write like a specific voicing for Fergus to play, I just kind of leave that to them and that's where like my favourite part of the process was where I kind of let go of my kind of expectations of it and just giving it to everyone else and that's where it really develops its character and stuff. And that's something in the last volume I really missed doing over over lockdown because in, in the fifth volume we, um, I obviously produced all the music at home and we did it remotely so I would send people their parts and they would record it and send it back to me and then then you miss out on a lot of interaction and it was it was a, it was fun still but it was a completely different way of recording it was really made me think like how do I want it? every specific thing was like oh I, I've never really had to think about it 
as much as it did. And that was a real challenge, but yeah, um, usually the process is when we're all together in a room, it's really open and creative and everyone's just bringing their own thing to it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna count you in. Is that was that nice? Uh, maybe I'll go. Are you not doing? Are you not doing? Oh, how long this song's called? Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, usually, let me, let me count you in first. Count me in. You should, you should do it like yeah. as cheesy as I possible. Just, I like. <laughs> as in, this next tune's called Scott. One, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking it would be too heavy. Right. So it's there. Here. here we go. Try and watch yourself. <laughs> Every time. So in the first volume we did a lot of kind of video editing and we used green screens and a lot of that stuff which was really cool and I really enjoyed doing it but I, I realised it wasn't very sustainable to make our uh, video editor Justina constantly doing that every three weeks so we kind of went more towards uh, the one shot approach and Justina's amazing at doing that with the, with the music and can kind of like kind of almost rehearses with us and learns like Who's solo was when and, and uh, really responsive and every take so consistent so we like luckily we can do one shots and that makes the feel of the video more natural and make you know more watchable I feel. I always love love one shots way more when they're done properly. So for the audio mixing, Stevie Cosser mixed the first volume. Stevie's an amazing audio kind of wizard just just like amazing 
years and ridiculous ma um, mixing and mastering engineering. Um, and he taught me everything I know about mixing and mastering. So he kind of mixed the first volume of stuff and taught, and well, we mixed them together, but he pretty much mixed it and taught me all about that side of things, which I'd never really had any experience of before. I'd made beats on Logic and had done that kind of thing, but never mixed the live session. That was, that was a real challenge for me. But Stevie, I'm really glad Stevie kind of let go of my hand and let me do that, because now I'm, it's something I'm pretty confident with, but at first it was super daunting and, you know, learning how to do all this stuff as well has been like super valuable for me. Yeah, but, um, so Stevie mastered all the, all the tracks and he's just an amazing master of the as well. As well as an amazing, amazing dude. collaborations we did as a project uh, was with uh, one of my best friends and an amazing singer and amazing vocalist uh, Katie Doyle aka Kitty. We wrote a tune together called Better and we actually wrote that with Tom McGuire as well. Um, but yeah that tune is our hit and a lot of people have checked us out because of that tune and yeah Katie's just such an awesome musician and songwriter. to collaborate with loads of different uh, musicians and artists on the project including Kitty who I've spoken about, Johnny Woodham who is the trumpet player for Rex Orange County and he plays in Alpha Mist as well and Johnny's like yeah one of my oldest friends I've known him since I was like 12 and uh, he was always such a bad influence on me but nah I'm just kidding. We've had him on I think three tunes one of them was the lockdown tune.
finally Soweto Kenshu we got to um, feature on our final track of the whole series. It's called Is That It? And yeah, it was such a treat to work with Soweto. Yeah, I've listened to his music since I was a wee guy and yeah, he's an amazing saxophone player and rapper, vocalist, um, producer and it was just like a dream of mine to work with him and it was an awesome experience and uh, I learned a lot from it and yeah it was uh, that's definitely one of my favourite tunes and one of my favourite kind of musical pieces of work that I produced so yeah taking a couple months off just to work on other projects that I'm involved with like writing new music with Tom McGuire and working on the new Strata album with Graham Costello as well as just various other stuff but I think we're gonna have a new single out by the end of the year and then hopefully start recording an album next year and then maybe release it by the end of next year but maybe the year after and I really want that to be another just big collaborative project with as many musicians as I can involve with it and uh, hopefully have some really special features and do more work with more kind of well-known artists and do stuff like that um, as well as next year play hopefully play some festivals and uh, play some live shows and I want to focus on that as well a bit more but yeah, definitely taking a break from releasing new music and writing new music just because there's so much music we already have out there for people to check out and just we're going to spend the next while just trying to convince more people to listen to that, I suppose. Yeah. 